In this lesson, we're going to take a look at how the use of annotative scaling can help simplify adding annotative objects at different scales. First, let's take a look at a world without annotative scaling. I'm going to add some text in here to my model, and I'm going to bump its height up to 12 inches based on the scale factor here, and then I'll just simply add in my text of tellers for this bank here, and then I'll just move it into place. Next, I'm going to add in a dimension. So I'll set my dimensions layer current. I will add a linear dimension using an architectural style that's already scaled up 24 times. So that's one of the other issues with placing stuff in model space. I have to do some scaling. So let's dig into that just a little bit. If I look at my dimension style, you can see that I've applied a scale of 24 to this dimension. Without that, the dimension is so tiny it's not even readable. So here's an example of a linear dimension without the scale applied. The text is not even readable, so it has to be scaled up 24 times to even be readable here. And then finally, I will add some hatching. So I'll set my hatching layer current and I'll add hatching to these three areas. Now note that I've already adjusted the scale factor here as well. If I left it at one, the hatching almost looks solid because it's so close together. I'll set my scale to 24, and then I'll go ahead and hatch these areas of the teller stations. So it doesn't look too bad here. So taking a look at this paper space layout, I have four different viewports scaled differently. And as you can see, my text size is not consistent. The larger the scale is, the larger the text is. Same thing with the dimensions. You can see the dimension height is different in each view and the hatching is spaced apart differently in each view. So when I print this out, I want a very consistent drawing where all the hatch patterns are the same, all the text heights are the same, and all the dimensions are the same as well. That is something that annotative scaling will help us do very easily. So I'm gonna return back to the model tab and erase these items that I put in here. And I'm gonna start with the text. So this time I am going to make sure that I have an annotative text style. So if I click the drop down next to my styles here, I'm going to choose annotative. Now you might remember that my text I put in at 12 inches tall. The 12 inches comes from a quarter inch equals a foot scale. So if I have a quarter inch equals a foot scale, that's a 48 scale factor. If I want a quarter inch tall text, I multiply that times the 48 and that gives me 12. So that's where the 12 value comes up. So that means on my viewports, on the quarter inch equals a foot viewport, all my text was scaled properly but the other three, they were not. Once again, I don't wanna worry about that this time. So I am going to use my annotative scaling. So once again, I'll make sure that I have an annotative text style available. And then I also wanna make sure that I set my annotative scale before I place my text. So down here on my status bar, I can see the current scale is one to one. I'm going to set that to a quarter inch equals a foot. Then, I will come in here and place my text. As you can see, it's already scaled nicely, so I didn't have to type in any additional values here. Notice that in the text editor, it actually displays it as a quarter inch tall text. And then once more, I can go ahead and type in my text here. Now let's take a look at what happened in the viewports. As I switch to the layout, I may see the text in all views or I may just see it in the quarter inch equals a foot viewport. And that is controlled by this button down here on the status bar. This button right here, first of all, this is the annotative scale symbol. It looks like the end of an architect or engineer scale. And when this is turned on, it's going to show all annotation objects, regardless of viewport scale. So I'm going to turn that off. And so by default here, only those items that are scaled the same as the viewport will display. So you can see that tellers displays here because this was a quarter inch equals a foot viewport. But these other viewports, it does not display. So three eighths, half inch, and three quarter inch. So how can I get it to display? 
I'll switch back to the model tab. I'll select my annotative object, then right click. Then I will find annotative object scale and then add and delete scales. In the dialog box that pops up, I'll click add. And then I'll go ahead and add in those additional scales. So I wanted 3 eighths of an inch equals a foot. I'll hold control and select a half inch and three quarters. And then I'll click OK and OK again. Now when I select the text, it is going to preview the different sizes. And in fact, you can use grips to pull the different sizes apart. But nonetheless, if I switch back to the D size tab, you can now see that that text shows up in all viewports and it's scaled consistently. So I didn't have to try to create multiple scaled texts to get this to work. I just put in one piece of text and then I add the scales to each one. So let's look at the same idea with a slightly different workflow. This time I'm going to add in a dimension and I'm just going to pick one of these viewports here. One of the nice things about placing the items in the viewport is it will automatically set your annotative scale to the viewport scale. So I'll go ahead and place a dimension in here. And once again, it automatically displays in here because it assigned the half inch equals a foot to it. So another way that you can add the scales is by coming back to this button I discussed earlier that shows all objects regardless of their scale. Then I can go into a viewport, select the item, right click, annotative object scale, and add the current scale. So the nice thing about that is I didn't have to remember what the scale was and pick it from a list. I can just go ahead and add the current scale in each case. And as you can see each time it updates. And once again, everything is consistent. So you can see that three foot dimension, the tick marks, the gaps, the text, they're all the same regardless of the viewport scale. I do want to remember to turn off that option to show all annotative objects. That way only the correctly scaled items show up in each viewport. Finally, I'll add in some hatching. This is another type of object that could have annotative scaling applied to it. So I'll switch back to my hatching layer, choose my hatching tool. And this time, instead of putting in that scale of 24, I'm gonna set it to one, but I am gonna turn annotative on by checking it here. So instead of being a style name, you just basically turn it on or off. Once again, it, by default, it's gonna go ahead and come in at whatever scale is showing here in the status bar. So I'll go ahead and bring it in a quarter inch equals a foot. Now, when I switch back to my D size tab, it's only going to show in this one viewport because once again, it's only has the quarter inch scale added to it. So I'm going to go ahead and select the hatching and then annotative object scale, add delete scales. And I think this is a little faster because I can add all three of them at the same time instead of having to go to each viewport. I'll add the three viewport scales. And now you can see that I've got every object hatched. And this time I have a nice consistent look to my hatch patterns. One final tool that I'll show you is the ability to automatically add scales. So here I'm in the quarter inch equals a foot view. And we already seen that I have three eighths, one half and three quarters, but I'm going to change this view to an eighth inch equals a foot. Now, if I change the scale to an eighth inch equals a foot, all my annotative objects disappear because I never added the one eighth scale to those items. So I'm going to undo that. And rather than having to go through and add that scale to the hatching, to the text and to the dimensions, I instead am going to turn on this ability to automatically add the scales when I change the scale. So I'll set this to an eighth inch equals a foot. And now you can see the scale has been updated. The hatch patterns match, the text size match, and the dimensions match as well. A little crammed in there because of the small scale, but nonetheless, you can see that it does automatically update for me if I turn that option on. So once again, in order to use annotative scaling, you just want to make sure that you turn on the annotative option on those objects.
and then make sure that you set your annotative scale in the status bar, then add and delete scales as necessary. That concludes this look at annotative scaling in AutoCAD.